Hey, fam. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in. I'm trying to try, trying to get my little self together. <laughs> I had on my shades this morning and then I left a little line up under my eye. I hope that look all right, child. Well, it's going to be what it's going to be. What's up, y'all? Good morning, child. Good morning. How y'all doing? Y'all good? I pray your morning is going well. I'm getting myself together, y'all. Give me a second. I pray your day is going well thus far. <clears throat> Come on in the room, child. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. All right, let me find myself here. Y'all give me a second. You may hear me running my mouth, but give me a second. Morning, everybody. All right, let's go. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness, grace, mercy. We thank you for allowing us to see a new day. Thank you, Father God, for your tender mercies that are new every morning. Thank you for your faithfulness, Father God. We love you. We adore you. We magnify you. We lift you up. And we make your name great. We honor you, Father, because you are a good Father. I pray that you would give us this day our daily bread. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil. I pray, Father God, that you will continue to show us that you are our shepherd. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you for, I see six birds this morning. I usually only see one and I see it every single morning. And you simply remind me when I see those birds, you simply remind me that you're going to take care of me. But this morning I see six of them. And then a seventh one came. Hallelujah. And then there's an eight one over there. He's just sitting, chilling. Oh, God, I'm telling you, I know other people look at that and it doesn't, it doesn't phase them one bit. But every time, I, and now he's gone. Every single time I see a bird in the air and every time I see them pecking as if they're looking for food, I, listen, I am reminded of your promises. I am reminded that you are a covenant keeping God. And that you will take care of me. That's what birds in the air remind me of. When I see the grass, my grass is grown. When I see my grass grow and I have to call the lawn man, I am reminded. Listen, I don't even fuss anymore about having to pay the yard man. I just look at that grass and I say, thank you, God, because you have given me yet Another reminder that if you take care of the grass in the field, if you make sure that this grass is watered, you make sure that these birds get food. Listen, I was even reminded yesterday, I was driving down the road, Lord. I was driving down the road. You know, I was eating that chicken that I got that old not good chicken I got from Winn Dixon yesterday. It was not doing what I needed it to do. But anyway, Jesus, I was driving down the road, God, and you told me to throw that bone out of the window and i said god throw the bone out of the window that's so ghetto throw the bone out of the window and as i threw the bone out of the window i threw about three of them out of the window i was reminded that god by jesus y'all i'm getting excited lord i was reminded that when i threw that bone out of the window i was reminded that you were telling me at that time, throw this bone out of the window because I got an animal. I got something that I have created that's gonna need that meal. They're gonna, they're gonna chew on that. You're gonna, I'm using you to be a blessing to somebody else. Y'all better catch this. Y'all better catch this in this prayer this morning. 
I thank you, God, that you are using people, that you are sending strangers. The strangers are coming. You're sending strangers to bless me. You're sending strangers, people I don't even know. They are, listen, they're throwing a bone out there for me. <laughs> they're throwing a bone out there for my sister. They're throwing a bone out there for my brother. They're throwing, listen, they are going to come. You're going to use them to supply our needs. You didn't, listen, you didn't, listen, you said, and God shall supply. Listen, you, God, you, I, ooh, 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 I'm excited. I am excited this morning. I am excited because you are reminding me this morning that you shall supply all of our needs. All. Somebody say all. All means every single one of them. I don't care what it is, God. You will supply. You will supply. You are our supplier. You are our supplier. We can trust you this morning. We can trust you to supply. We can trust you to meet us right where we are. We can trust you. Glory to God. We can trust you. Yeah, we can trust you. Hey, God, so far. We can trust you. We can trust you. We can trust you. And supplying our needs does not just mean monetary. It means supplying our emotional needs. It means supplying our mental needs. It means supplying our physical needs. It means supplying, listen, our, our health needs. It means for job. God, whatever need we have today, I glorify you. I thank you that you're going to supply our needs. Ha, I think you're going to supply our needs in the name of Jesus. We go ahead in advance and we give you praise for it. Why? Because we know that it's already done. We know that, listen, you are a covenant keeping God. You keep your promises. And if you said it, you're going to do it because your word never returns to you void. It goes out and it does that what you have purpose for it to do. So we thank you that every need shall be supplied. I, Jesus, glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Bless this conversation today. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. We welcome you in the room, God. We Listen, have your way in the room. Have your way in us on today. Have your way. Jesus, have your way. Uh-huh. Have your way, God. We love and adore you today. We give you praise and honor today. Because you are a good, good father. You are a good, good father. I hear that. The way God says, dwell on the good things. <laughs> dwell on the good things that I have done. Dwell on what I have done. I know you keep thinking about what you want me, what you want me to do. Dwell on what I have done. Go ahead and thank me for what I have done. Go ahead and thank me for the prayers that I have answered. Go ahead and thank, thank me for what I did do. Go ahead and think. See, I need you to shift your thinking this morning. I shift. I need you to, I'm talking to somebody. I need you to shift your thinking. I know that it's challenging for you to because what you're going through. I know that you can't hardly see. You can't hardly see out of these this little wall you got up. But I need you to think about. I need you to do a Philippians 4, 8. It says, think on these things. Things that are lovely and of a good report. Come on. Things that are gosh, say, bye. things that, listen, I need you to begin to change the way you're thinking. I, because when you change the way you're thinking, you're going to see me in a new light. You're going to see it from a different perspective. You're going to understand that I'm not doing it to you. I'm doing it for you. I'm not doing it to you, baby. I'm doing it for you. There is something that I'm working in you. Well, I'm working it out. I'm working something in you. I'm doing something in you. I am causing the fruit of the spirit to be developed. You do understand that it is all about the fruit. It is all about the fruit. It is all about the fruit. Listen, the Bible says, he that abides in me and my word abides in him. Listen, you can ask what you will and I'm going to do it. You Listen, you got to stay connected to the vine in order to bear fruit. You got to stay connected to the vine. So I hear the Lord saying to us this morning, somebody, I hear the Lord saying to somebody this morning that I need you to listen. I need you to remove the blockers. I need to look at shit. And I need you to be able to look at this thing from a bigger picture. I need you to keep your mind on me while you see everything that's happening around you. I'm not going to remove the situation. I'm not listen. No, 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 no. I know you're crying and you're saying, God, can you remove it? God, can you fix it? God, can you change it? God says, I'm not doing that right now until I develop the character in you that I need to see. There is something uh -huh, in you that I need to see that resembles me. When I see me, Jesus, oh, 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 let me, oh, oh. God says, when I see me in you, and when you see me in you, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you see God 
Baby, I'm telling you, that's when it's going to shift. That's when it's going to change. God said, I'm not changing anything until I am the one that you see. Until I see me in you. That's when it'll change. I bet Rabbi Soroko, so I hear the spirit of the Lord say, there is in, in Psalms, it says, uh, delight thyself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart, right? This is what I want you to hear this morning. I want you to hear it by the Holy Ghost because I'm telling you, he just came up in the room out of nowhere like a mighty rushing wind. You saw, listen, baby, 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 you better catch this. I hear the Lord saying to us this morning, the reason I keep telling you to delight yourself in me and I will give you the desires of your heart is because, listen to me, it is because when you delight yourself in me, that means I get all the loving. I, you, you get intimate with me. You know, you're thinking about me. Think about it like this. This is how you can think about it. When you, I, This is the only way I know how to tell it to you. When you are intimate with someone, let's say your spouse, right? You're intimate with your spouse, right? When you are intimate with your spouse, you don't think about nobody else. You can have children in the house. You don't care. You can have company in the house. You don't care. Your mother could be there. You don't care. And listen, it could be people all around y'all, but when it's time for intimacy, baby, you don't care about the people. Your affections, your eyes, your energy, your time, your everything is on that individual. It's on your spouse, right? All you thinking about is them. All you want to, listen, you want to do anything they want to do. You want to go anywhere they want to go. You will say anything they want. Listen, you will do whatever they want, baby. It is your command. You are pleased to do it. You are happy to do it. It pleases you to do it. Listen, it is pleasurable for you, right? You don't want to go nowhere. You ain't trying to rush. You ain't, try, listen, you ain't trying to do nothing else. You say, I, I, I'm blocking off this time. Jesus. I'm blocking off this time to be with this individual. And God says, I want that. <laughs> God says, I want that. Come on. I want that. Come on. I want that. I want just like when you with your spouse or when you was with your spouse and how that thing would be so good to you. You would look up and be like, oh, it's been two hours. We've been in here love, making love for two hours. Ooh, good. Fresh. God said, that's how I want you to do me. I want you to be with me. I want you to be with me. And the time go by and you can't even realize. Oh, my goodness. I got to get up because the time that came by and you don't realize how much time you done spent with the Lord. God says, I want you to be intimate with me so much that nothing else matters that nothing else no one else matters you ain't coming listen because when you come in, when you come in there with your with your with your boo with your spouse baby you don't be talking about no um you heard about such and such and you you ain't laying no problems down in there you not worried about no problems in there you ain't doing none of that baby all you doing is about him or her yo listen all everything you got baby all you worried about is them all you worried about is them, baby. How can I please you? How can I make you happy? How can I make you smile? What do you want me to do? You'll even try new things. Y'all better hear me this morning. You'll even try new things, honey, to please that individual. You'll try new things. Listen, you'll do it in different places. Y'all better listen. Get your mind where your mind need to be so you can catch this here. You better catch it. You will do it in different places. Listen, you will do whatever you need to do to make that thing better. God says, I need you to just get out of your room. I understand you got a little prayer closet, but I need you to be able to pray in your car. I need you to be able to pray in your classroom. I need you to be able to pray in your office. I need you to be able to talk to me at the grocery store. I need you to be able to talk to me at the gas station. I need, listen, I need you to be able to talk to me anywhere. I need you to be able to be intimate with me anywhere. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Baby, when you be with your, <laughs> baby. Baby, I may be single, but I ain't forgot. Baby, when you intimate with that individual, and I'm telling you, all you just want more and more and more. The more you get, the more you want. Am I lying? Especially if it's good. <laughs> Especially if it's good. Baby, you listen, you want it morning, noon, and night. <clears throat> Midnight, 3 a.m., you don't care. Wake me up. You don't care. Baby, if that thing good to you, you don't mind I'm waking you up in the morning, honey. You don't mind. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Y'all know I'm telling. Come on, Sharon. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. 
Y'all know I'm telling the truth. God says that's how I want my relationship with you to be. I want, I listen, I want us to be so good that you want me morning, noon, and night. You seeking me morning, noon, and night. Listen, you you can't wait to spend time with me. Listen, you moving stuff out of the way. You know how we used to do some young married people. I hope you're doing it. Don't let me get on y'all this morning. Baby, you be trying to get the kids situated. You be trying to get stuff situated. Oh, I got to get home. My baby going to be home at night. I got to get home. I got to be right. I got. We got a date. Da, 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 da. We're going out of town. We're going to spend the weekend away. Blah, blah, blah. Baby, you setting things up. You getting things in place so that you can be available and you can spend uninterrupted time with them. God says, this is what I want for you. This is what I mean when I say delight yourself in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. See, when I am your affections, when I'm the first thing you think about in the morning, instead of picking up that phone and swiping to see who texts you, to see who calls you, to see what's the latest on social media, to see what they're saying on Instagram, to look at what they're done tweeting on Twitter, and to see what they're done posted on Facebook. God said, when I become first, when I am your affection, when you're not looking, turning to the TV to see what Creflo said, when you're not turning to uh, YouTube to see what Jake said, when you're not turning to somebody else to get a word, but you're turning to me, he says, that makes my heart smile. That does me good. I get happy. I get excited because you you're seeking me. You're searching for me. You know, it's a Jeremiah 29, 12 and, and 13 type of situation. It says that when you start seeking me, when you start searching for me with all your heart, God says, you're going to find me. You know how it is. You know, when you used to play hide and go see, eventually you find him. You know, they might be hiding one minute and all of a sudden be like, I got you. Baby, God says, I want you to come seeking for me because you go, I'm going I'm to come from behind the tree and I'm just going to step. This God. God doing like this. He said, when you come looking for me, I'm going to be like this. See how I am? <laughs> God said, that's not how the game's supposed to be played. But listen, let me tell you something. You ain't going to never look for me and don't find me. You ain't going to never look for me and don't find me, boo-boo. I, I need you to understand something. I Listen, when you come looking for me, you're going to find me because that's what I want. I need, God says, I need some of y'all to return back to me, to return to your first love. You know why this stuff bothers you the way it's bothering you? You know why you can't rest like you know you need to rest? You know why you can't get no sleep? You know why you still, your mind's still going and going and going? God says, because you haven't made me first. Because you haven't put it in my hands. You put it in and then you come back and get it. You put it in and then you come back and pick it up again. You put it in my hand then you come back. You put it in my and then you're looking back. <laughs> hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. God says, let me tell you something. God says, some of you... <coughs> You put it in my hands and you might not come back, but you looking back. God, you got it. As if you could do anything better. Listen, let me, let me, let me holler at you real quick. Let me holler at you real quick. If you could do it better, you would have done it by now. If you could change the situation, you would have changed it by now. If you could have do something different, you would have done it by now. If you could have fixed the problem, you would have fixed it by now. But since you can't, somebody say since you can't. Baby, got you. Since you can't, <laughs> since you ain't been able to fix it, since you ain't been able to do it, since you ain't been able, listen, since you ain't been able, since you ain't been able, since you ain't been able, since you ain't got Rosata, Zimbabwe Rosata, since you ain't been able, baby, since you ain't been able, baby, since you ain't been able, since you ain't been able, since you ain't been able, since you can't, you might as well leave it with somebody that can. Let me tell you something. This is the other analogy that I had. This is the other analogy that I had. When you go to the bank, some of you can't save a listen, you can't save a nickel or a dime. You spend every dime nickel you got. Baby, even a penny, you're ready to you, you listen, you're looking for something to buy. Right? This is the analogy that he just gave me. He said, when you uh-huh, when you go to the bank, some of you have to put your money in the bank in order for the bank to save the money because you know that if you try to do it, you can't. God says, Let me be the bank this morning. Let, let listen, come and bring your problems to me. Make a deposit this morning. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna give you a wit. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow you to withdraw joy. <laughs> I, I should Say about it. I'm gonna allow you to withdraw peace. Uh -huh. I need you to bring me the problem, and I'm gonna allow you to withdraw strength. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm gonna allow you to draw victory. Uh -huh. I'm gonna listen. God says, when you delight 
yourself in me uh -huh, and you and you allow me listen when you allow me to be first uh -huh, when you allow me to take over uh -huh, when you listen when you allow me to tell you how I want it <laughs> and you agree uh -huh, you know how your spouse you know your, your spouse said baby I want you to do it like this tonight and you say okay God says when you treat me like that uh -huh, when you put me first like that uh -huh, when you do it like that uh -huh, when you don't argue with me when you don't tell me no when you just let me have full cause full reign God says when you do that it pleases me uh -huh. it makes me smile because intimacy means into you I see so you allow me yeah come on go over there God said I'm shifting uh -huh. see God says I need you to stop acting like it don't bother you I need you to stop acting like you got it all together I need you to stop acting like you know it ain't it ain't testing you I need you to stop acting like you know you really want to ask me why but you over there acting like you don't got no questions I need you to stop acting like you don't have no issue with how I'm moving. I need you to let me see you now. I need you to take that mask off. I need you to be real with me. If you're mad, tell me you're mad. If you're sad, tell me you're sad. If you're angry, tell me you're angry. If you don't understand, tell me you don't understand. See, it doesn't bother me, says God, when you don't understand something. It doesn't bother me, uh-huh, when you have an issue that you can't figure out and you're upset because I haven't worked it out. God says, I need you to tell me that. See, I need you to be real with me. Come on. I need you to tell me how you're really feeling so I can deal with it. See, the problem is we God can't heal what you won't reveal. Y'all ain't ready for it today. Y'all ain't ready for it today. And I got testing today, so I need all my energy. You can't heal from what you won't reveal baby you better reveal that thing god says i need this come 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 in come in come in come in stop over there and tell me about it listen you ain't got to go in no form of prayer thou was art thou god of heaven and earth if, honey baby you better listen god that bothered me when i called so and so and i tried to fix it i tried to you know bring that thing back together and they ignored me and they didn't return my text and they sent this 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 little text that god that bothered me god, listen god said i need you listen i need you to be real with me I need you to be real with me. I need you to come to me, bring it to me, and leave it. And when you leave it, walk off rejoicing. Because an exchange has been made. I keep telling y'all, be anxious for nothing. But what do you do? You pray. Why are you walking around anxious? You're not supposed to be walking around anxious. You're not supposed to be walking around perplexed. You're not supposed to be walking around overwhelmed. You're not supposed to be walking around can't sleep. You're not supposed to be walking around with your mind going and going and going. You're not supposed to be doing that. You're out of order. He can't help you. He can't help you. He cannot help you. It's a conditional promise. You got to do your part. Then God's going to do his. He can't help you. Because you're not doing what he said. What did he say, Jacina? Be anxious for nothing. But by prayer, What's going on? but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Are you making your request known? <clears throat> now, listen. <clears throat> yeah, I made my request known, JC. Yes, I prayed. But did you thank him in advance? <laughs> did you thank him in advance? I'm telling you, when you delight yourself in him, he gonna give you the desires of your heart. I'm coming back to that. Hold on. You just stay right there. You stay right there. The day you don't need to click off, you stay right there. Okay, you got to put an air pod, some kind of bud in your ear to hear this. You need to stay right there. Don't you leave today. Not today. Not today. I'm getting ready to tell you how you're going to, how you, I'm getting ready to tell you how you're going to come through this thing on the winning side. <clears throat> stop being anxious. How am I going to stop being anxious, J.C.? You're going to pray and tell God all about it. But this is the part we miss. We don't thank him in advance. When you thank God in advance, what you're doing is saying, God, I already know you can, and I already know you will, and I'm going to wait well. Because that's what I told him this morning. God, I thank you. I told him that this morning on my drive to work. God, I know that you can. I know that you will, and I will wait well. Oh, I'm going to wait well. I, listen, listen, I might have, listen, I might have some days where I'm over here looking crazy and trying to figure out what you're doing. But baby, as soon as I come into the knowledge of what I'm doing, I have to pull that down. Immediately pull that down. Any thought that comes against the knowledge of God, you got to pull that down. You can't let that sit out there and wonder. You can't let it float freely. This is why some of us, we, 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 we upset and we 
trying to figure out what God doing and why he done what he said he's going to do yet. It is because you have let your thoughts wonder. You don't let thoughts wonder, baby, if they don't come into the knowledge of God. If they come against the knowledge of God, what is that? What God told you? If anything you're thinking comes against what God said, you need to snatch that down and replace it with what God did say and then stand on that. How are you going to walk in faith when you let these thoughts just float around? This is why we can't delight in the Lord because you're delighting in worry. You're delighting in, in anxiousness. You're de listen, you're delighting in something else, but it's not God. You know, worry is meditating. It's just meditating on the wrong thing. And, and listen, let me tell you something. Statistics say, statistics show that the not what is it like 90% it's like a high number it's in the 90s of stuff that we worry about is never even going to happen so when the enemy comes to you and says to you oh you're not gonna get healed oh you're not gonna get married or your marriage is not gonna be restored or you're not gonna you're gonna be in lack or you're not gonna be able to pay this or you're not gonna or you're not gonna or your child is gonna be or you're not gonna or you Tear that thing down. That's a lie. That's a lie. For it is written. I'm telling you. God said, what did he say to us earlier? When I see me in you, that's when things will start changing. Let me give you a little, let me give you a little preview of the of the of the of the end, of the conclusion. When we delight ourselves in God, you know what happens? We are so consumed with delighting him. We are so consumed with pleasing him that we forget our wants. Can I go back to the illustration? Somebody say go back. Mm -hmm. Somebody say go back, Jay. I got some iced coffee this morning, y'all. I'm being grown. Somebody say go back. Go back to the illustration. <clears throat> I'm going back to the illustration with the man and the woman. Thank you, Melissa, because you know I don't need but one. I'm going back to the illustration of the of the, the individual with their spouse. When you with your spouse, and your spouse, now some of y'all, some of us, it ain't been with our spouse that we did this with, but you just roll with me. We, the Lord's going to cover that. Some of y'all was with somebody else, but this, but but for the sake of the uh, illustration, we, yeah, mm. yeah. Oh God, you better not show me that right now. You better come on. So you with your with your spouse. I'm gonna keep it spouse for for the sake of of of, of delivering the message. And your spouse may say, "I want you to do this," but you don't really want to do it. And they're like, come on, I want you to try this. I want you to do this. And they're like, I ain't never did that before. When you with your spouse, baby, and you feel safe with them, they make you feel a way that nobody's ever made you feel before. You know that with them, you could be 100% you. It's such a beautiful place. I can't wait to get back there. It's such a beautiful place. Do you know? <clears throat> and do it right <clears throat> this time. Do you know that you are willing to do whatever they want you to do? You'll do it. It's intended to get you out your comfort zone. Y'all, I'm about to run. I'm trying to, I'm coming up closer to the desk because I got my feet on the back of the desk because, uh, at the bottom of this desk because I need it to hold me here because I feel like running. When your spouse treats you well, when they love you right, you want to do whatever, child, I'm telling you the truth, you want to do whatever they want you to do and you want to do it wherever they want to do it. And they take you out your comfort zone. And you look back and you be like, I would have never did that. I've never done that before, but you but you made me do it. You know why? Because you love them. 
some of y'all in lust, but anyway, we pray and get snatched up out of that. But you love them. <clears throat> and so because you love them, you're willing to do whatever they ask of you, even if it makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> God said, when you delight yourself in me, God darn it, sir, you better come with this fire today. I see why you had me get iced coffee today because I couldn't drink that hot coffee. All right. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. God, this is what God is saying. When you delight yourself in me, when I tell you to do something uncomfortable, you'll do it. Because you know I got you. <laughs> You're going to do it because you know that I'm with you. You're going to do it because you know that you know how much I love you. When you, God says, I, that thing will be uncomfortable for you. Yeah, it will. But listen, but because you trust me like that, you're going to do it. Cause you know I got you. You know I listen. You 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 know I'm gonna take care of you. This is why he says, "Delight yourself in me, and I'll give you the desires of your heart." Let me let me plug in right there. Come here. Let me plug in right there. You know you can go in one way with God, but when you start delighting yourself in Him, you can start seeing things from a totally different perspective. That's what He really wants. So you may go in with God and you may be saying, God, I'm so sick of my husband. He treating me bad. God, I want you to get him. God, I'm so sick of my boss. My boss is being mean to me. They won't give me a promotion. They keep letting people skip over me. God, you told me I was going to do this. You told me that I, you, I was going to be great. My name was going to be great. But these people won't even let me speak in church. God, I, I, have, to, I have to hide my gift. I have to put my gift up under. I, I, I can't even let my gift shine. God, you, I, God I'm, I, I don't understand why you haven't healed my body. God, I don't understand why you haven't brought me through, why you haven't opened this door for me financially. God, I don't understand. God, I don't understand. God, I, God said, when you delight yourself in me, first of all, you're going to get your mind. Because listen, it says in me. You're delighting yourself in me, in God, in him. So you ain't thinking about that. You ain't thinking about them. You, you're not even thinking about none of that. Because you're, de ah, you're delighting yourself in him. Remember the illustration. Baby, them kids coming. They're knocking on. Go ahead. on, sit down and go to bed. <laughs> Baby, you in there with your spouse. Baby, you in there with your spouse and y'all making that thing happen. Baby, them kids going to knock. Mama, I'm hungry. Go in there and fix you something to eat. <laughs> Get your butt away from <laughs> Get away from my door. Girl, you be like. Oh, God, I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, Lord. You'll be in there like, get away from the door and go in there. Not, not all before. Don't go in my refrigerator. Stop eating up my food. Baby, you get in there and you delight yourself and your husband. You delight yourself and your spouse. You're like, get away from my door. <laughs> go to sleep. Leave me alone. Leave us alone. I told y'all not to come in this door. When this door is locked, y'all know this door closed. Don't be coming in here. Don't call my name. This door open up again. You welcome to call my name. Don't come in here. I'm just going to be hungry. I don't care. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Why? Because you delighting yourself. In them. Let me look up delight. Because y'all playing this morning. Get myself together while I'm looking this word up. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Delight yourself. Listen, when you delight yourself, this is it says highly pleasing. Affording great pleasure and satisfaction. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, child. It says to take pleasure, to give keen, that means high, sharp enjoyment, to give joy or satisfaction to. When we take delight in God's law, in God's word, we take pleasure in the word of God. It means we enjoy the word. We enjoy our time with him. 
It's like enjoying your favorite dessert, enjoying your favorite food. You know, you know, oh, that's so good. Thank you, Lord. That's so good because I'm thinking about, you know, how I, I'm a tea lover. You can't hardly tell that now because our body got me hooked. She done got me on this coffin, baby. Y'all should see me. I got pods everywhere, all kind of pods. I just be overdoing it. I really do. I just be doing too much. But anyway, now, Saturday, was it Saturday? No, Sunday. I made me a cup of coffee. Y'all, this is how I was drinking the coffee. Because that thing was good to me. It was nice and hot. I didn't have nowhere to go, so I didn't have to rush. I was just drinking my coffee. This is how I was, y'all. And I was just sitting there. I didn't have nothing. I didn't have any music on. I didn't have any TV on. It was just me and the Lord. And I was just sitting there. And I was just thinking. I was just meditating on how good he's been. And I was just waiting for him to talk. And I would. I was taking my time with that coffee. Oh, God, that's good. And I would notice when I would be at school <clears throat> and I'd be trying to drink my coffee. Well, if I mess up. And I and I get to talking over there to, to Senior the Good or, or get interrupted. I would have to drink my coffee when the kids come in. And I don't like to take my mask off when they come in because these kids got a lot going on. They be coughing and sneezing and carrying on. Mm -mm. I don't be taking my mask off. So I have to slide my mask down real quick and get a quick drink. And I have to pull my mask back up. And it just ain't the same. But baby, on Sunday, when I could sit back, I even noticed that I had changed positions. The way I was sitting, I had to turn that thing to the side, Melissa. And I had to lean back on the sofa. And I was, girl, I was switching that thing up. I had my hand all between the cup. And I, ooh, I mean, that was, some, when I tell you, baby, that was some good coffee on Sunday. That was some good coffee on Sunday, baby. It was good to me. You know why? Because I took my time. And I enjoyed the presence of God. He did, and listen, I'm telling you, after all of that, that's when I had the little, the little vision about, about my husband. That's when he showed me that. Because I took my time. God is saying, I'm going back to the illustration. Stay with me. Some of y'all, y'all's too deep. You might have to click off, but those that can handle it, stay with me. So remember, we're, we're using the illustration, the example of being intimate with your spouse and how how you just you just enjoy it so much. You just put yourself all out there. Your attention, your focus, your time, your energy, everything is on that individual, right? When you <clears throat> are with that individual, you know how you get lost in them where you, you don't need nothing else going on? You don't want to hear anybody else's voice but theirs. You know how you wake up in the morning and you want to hear that morning, babe. I'm like, good morning. Now, I'm a sleeper. I love sleep and sleep loves me. I am not an early riser. I'm a night owl. I don't like you waking me up early in the morning. Please don't do it. Really don't call me before 10. You could text me around 9, but don't call me before 10 because I probably ain't going to answer the phone. My people already know this. My people that are close to me, they already know this. But baby, let that man call me. <laughs> it's something about when he calls. Baby, I could be over there asleep. I'm talking about seven dreams later. Baby, and that phone vibrator ring, and baby, I'd be like, because see, if he if he mean anything to me, he got a separate ringtone. If he don't have a separate ringtone, he ain't really in there. <clears throat> he ain't really in there. He just, you know, he's just a pseudo. He, he's not really in there. Baby, I, baby, this be me. Let, let him call me at seven. Good morning. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. <laughs> wake you up in the morning and you don't want to get up this you the devil is a lie i got another hour <laughs> baby baby it ain't the devil boo it's god 
Is God said, get up. I want to spend time with you. Get up. I want, I want to, I want to, I want to enjoy you before the kids come in, before the spouse wakes up, before you get to go into your day, before you get distracted. Cause you know, it don't take much. You know, y'all got that, that automatic stimuli, stimuli in you when you immediately grab that phone before you do all of that. Come wait, come here. That's why he wakes you up at three in the morning. This is why he wakes you up at four in the morning. He's waking you up because he said, I want to spend time with you. Isn't it amazing, though, how we'll break the rules for the world, but we won't bend, you, you know, we won't, we, we, we won't do it for God. Isn't it, isn't it amazing? Baby, I'm, te I'm telling on myself, and I know y'all do it too. That's why y'all laughing, Karen. On. Baby, that man called me, baby, in the morning. Listen, honey, you know, let me give you another example, because see, it's the examples for me. Uh, Andrea, it's the examples for me this morning, honey. You ever been... <clears throat> you ever been um in your in sitting in your you ain't gotta be in your bed. You in your bed or you in your um living room or wherever you are in your house and you reading your word, <clears throat> you trying to get yourself together, boy. You like God, I gotta get it together. Psalm 67, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us, that your ways may be known on earth and your salvation. And you done went to sleep. <laughs> now you was just up. You was just up. Wasn't nothing wrong with you. You was up. Talking and, and watching TV. Up. You was up. And all of a sudden you get to reading that word. And baby, it's like. <laughs> One time I caught myself. And I don't even snore. God, please. Bless my husband not to snore until I don't make a sound. Please, Jesus. Uh, baby, and I caught myself. I was, child, I was like, mm -hmm. what well, was like, uh -uh. <laughs> What is happening? Uh-uh, you need to <laughs> Baby, this is me. This is me. Alexa turned the light off, and Alexa was like, you know, she'd be lighting up like, Girl, I can't turn that light off. That light over there on the wall. Y'all pray for me today. Alexa, light. Girl, I can't turn that light off. This ain't no smart hub for OUC. You got to get up. Baby, then you got to get up, turn the light off. Now, all of a sudden, you awake. But baby, it seems like you go to read that word. You want to spend that intimate time with the Lord. You go to read that word and you just can't stay awake. God says, get up, go in there and wash your face. Because that's what you would do if you would. If, if somebody called you and they woke you up, oh, you'll get up. <clears throat> and you'll continue. You'll continue or you will begin that, that new conversation. God said, but you don't do that with me. This is what you do instead. Oh, I got to go to sleep. Oh, I got to go to sleep. Oh, I got to go to sleep. It's getting late. God be saying, you be treating me so wrong, but yet you want me to give you the desires of your heart. You don't want to delight in me, but you want these desires to be met. You don't want to delight in me, but you want me to answer these prayers. You don't want to delight in me, but you want me to come through. You don't want to, see, this is the thing. Come here, come here. When you delight yourself in him, I'm going to tell you what he's going to do. He's going to change your heart. You're going to want to get up at 3 a.m. When he touch you and say, hey, get up, you're going to want to do it when you delight in him. Because you're going to see it as an opportunity to spend some sweet time with the father instead of as an inconvenience and God, I need to get another hour of sleep. Do you know when you do what God, when you do what God wants you to do, any sacrifices that God wants you to make, do you know that he delivers? His reward is greater. God will make, listen, God, that little hour, hour and a half, two hours of sleep that you lost, God is a redeemer of time. God will give you energy that you never even thought you had to make it through the day because you chose him instead of your flesh. Let me tell you, I'm telling you, it is... 
I'm trying to tell you how you going to get through this season and come over on the winning side. I'm telling you how, sis, bruh, I'm telling you how. You're going to have to delight in God. You're going to have to fix your eyes on him. I'm telling you, he says, he that keeps his mind on me, what he going to do? He going to give you perfect peace. If you don't have peace, your mind ain't on God. Your mind is some. If you out here and don't have no peace, your mind is not on him. I didn't talk to y'all about them conditional promises last week. You don't have because you didn't ask. The door is not open because you ain't knocking. You ain't found because you're not seeking. I hear you. God says, say what I told you to say about 10 minutes ago. This is for somebody. This is for some. I don't know who somebody is, but it's for you. Receive this word of the Lord. God just said, you keep going to him <clears throat> about an individual. About how they're, what they're not doing. How they're not treating you. Uh, what's not happening in your relationship, right? God says, get your mind off of them and get your mind on me. And what this is what he's going to do. When you focus on God, he's going to then either one, he'll change the individual, which most times he don't. I'm telling you, he just don't. He'll change the, or he'll change the way you see the individual and it doesn't even bother you anymore. Or he'll change you. Which causes you to see a whole different perspective anyhow. God is not interested in us tattletelling on somebody else. He's not interested. God is not. Listen, I'm telling you what he says. Come here. Tell me about it. And then leave it. When you leave it, thank me. Thank me for the answer. And, ooh, I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. He said, and thank me. And then trust me for how I choose to answer and win. You know why it's hard for us to delight, to delight ourselves in God? Because we want to run the show. We're control freaks. We want to tell God what to do, when to do, how to do it. God, you take it too long. God, you should have came through by now. And I'm telling you what he's saying. I'm trying to develop something in you. And you're missing, the, you, you're missing it. Oh, that's so good. God said, what fruit are you lacking in this season? What fruit is it? Is it goodness? Come here. Let's look up these fruit real quick. Oh, God. Oh, that is so good. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that is so good. Oh, God. Did y'all just. Golly, did y'all just see that? Okay, these are this is the fruit. Galatians 5, 22 through 23, right? Paul lists nine specific behaviors. These are behaviors. Okay. Are you lacking love, peace, joy, forbearance, which is temperance? You don't know how to chill out. You don't have no patience. Kindness. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Ooh, gentleness is like compassion. Like, are you gentle with them? Do you have mercy? And self-control. What you missing in this season? Because that's what he's working on. I'm about to. Uh, God says, if you are missing. Any one of those fruit. That's what I'm working on in this season. This is why I keep telling you, you got to delight yourself in me. The only way you're going to bear fruit. Remember, abide in me and my word abides in you. You will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you will not bear fruit. What did Jesus do to the fig tree when he saw the fig tree and the fig tree wasn't bearing any fruit? He cursed it. I wonder if we haven't seen the manifestation of the thing 
I wonder if it's because the fruit hasn't matured. Your fruit isn't ripe. It's not edible. It's not, it's not good for use. You ever ate, you ever bit into a pear? You ever, you ever ate a piece of fruit that wasn't ripe? It didn't taste good. It wasn't useful for, for, for the purpose intended. He's trying to mature you. That's what he's doing. This is why he's saying, if you delight yourself in me, I'm going to help you because I'm going to, I'm going to work. I'm going to move with you. We're going to do it together. And then you're going to see this thing from a whole different perspective because you, listen, this is why he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. This, but this is why he also says, eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared. You know what? You're not, listen, you and I are not going to receive what he has prepared until we delight ourselves in him. I'm telling you, that's the key. That's another key. Who are you delighting yourself in? Some of us delight ourselves in, in us. It's all about us. It's what I want, when I want it, want it, how I want it. All it's just you. It's just all about you. Uh, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Delight yourself in Him, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. All right, I'm I'm say this, and I'm out. <clears throat> I'm going to say this little piece right here and then I'm out. The world cannot satisfy you. You trying to fix the problem is not going to work. You have got to trust that God, listen, listen to me. Listen to me, please. Take pleasure in him. Enjoy him. Like you would enjoy that cup of coffee. Like you would enjoy that dessert. I'm reminded of when I eat something and it's really good to me, especially I love seafood. I won't miss some this weekend. I love shrimp, blue crabs, potatoes, corn, sausage. Oh my goodness. My favorite seasoning is garlic butter. And with the extra Old Bay seasoning, listen here, John, and I mess up and get me a cherry Pepsi, a cold one, baby, I'm going to be asleep 30 minutes afterwards. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be ready to lie down somewhere, lie down. I taste good pleasure in eating them shrimp. I taste good pleasure in breaking that blue crab apart. Bougie people eat snow crabs. People that really know how to eat crabs, they eat blue crabs. That's, that's, and I said what I said, and that's what I said. Mm -hmm. I take great pleasure. I don't rush. I take my time. God says, if you enjoy me like you enjoy this, some of you is shopping. You just enjoy shopping. It's like it pleases you. You take great delight in it. It gives you such joy and satisfaction. God says, <clears throat> you really enjoy that, but you don't, you don't enjoy me like that. What is it in your life that you enjoy more than your time with God? And your time in his word. God says, because, oh, this is so good. God, that's good. God said, if you would look at his word. See, many of us look at the word of God as rules and laws. God says, instead of you looking at my word as rules and laws, and you look at it as protection and love, you change the way you see the word. You'll enjoy it more. But if you look at it, God said, don't do that. God said, don't do that. God said, don't do that. No, God says, don't do that because 
if you do that, it's going to hurt you. Look at the Bible like, that's good. Look at the Bible like, you know, when you tell a baby, they're walking by a, a stove or a fire or something hot, and you say, don't touch that, that's hot, don't touch that. Well, that's what God is doing. He's saying, don't touch that. That's hot. And there's going to there's gonna be a consequence for that. You're not going to like how that feels once you touch that. Well, that's what God is telling us in the world. When he said, don't do, he's saying it because he said, I don't want you to have to suffer. Oh, Jesus, I got to go. I got to go. I don't want you to suffer because you're choosing something that I haven't chosen for you. This is why when we delight ourselves, girl, I got one more example and I'm out. I'm serious. I'm out. When we delight ourselves in God, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're not going to want to do anything that's going to hurt, that is going to cause damage to, that is going to break that covenant relationship. You're not going to want to do it. This is why people that genuinely love their spouse, this is why it is good. This is people that's married, this is why it's good for you to be intimate with your spouse all the time. I'm talking about y'all should be tearing it up. Especially when you mad, baby, make up quickly. Because that's when the enemy comes in. When you're mad, when you ain't talking, when you're over there acting foolish and, and the fleshly, that's when the enemy come in. I'm telling y'all, baby, listen to me. Now, I was married, so I know what I'm talking about. When you are intimate, it brings you closer and closer and closer together. This is why he says to us that are single, don't do that. This is why he says, do not fornicate. This is why he says, do not commit adultery. Why? Because whoever you are, do, whoever you are intimate with, you're coming closer and closer and closer and closer together. So when things come out here and they start bonding with you, you don't even pay that no attention. Why? Because your focus, your delight is in that person. God darn it, God, this is good today. Your delight is in that individual. So you, you, you're coming closer and closer. That's why when it's the wrong individual, you can't see the red flags, the yellow lights. You can't see, you can't hear what you need to hear because you become intimate and it's drawing you closer when that is only supposed to be for a married spouse. That's good. That's why you can't let them go because you've been intimate with somebody that's not your spouse. That's why those of you that are married, when you're not intimate, you 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 hey you messing up you messing up you allowing the enemy come in you 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 messing up some stuff you messing up some stuff you, you the enemy can get in there when y'all ain't intimate when y'all ain't in there making that making that thing talk <clears throat> and making that bed shake when y'all ain't in there making that thing happen. Hey, when y'all ain't in there doing what y'all supposed to be doing, the enemy got room to come in there and do whatever, and that's what didn't happen. That's that's what didn't happen. Let's let's just stop playing church and let's be the church. You okay? You understand what I'm saying? That's what didn't happen. You done open the door for the enemy because you ain't you ain't, listen because you ain't open the door for your spouse. Open them legs for your spouse. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead on the go. Listen, I hope you got something from the word. I hope I hope you got something from today's conversation. I hope it tear you up all day. I hope you are reminded of this. Listen, I am reminded. God has told me this before. He says, Jacina, when I reveal it to you, you held accountable for it. When I reveal it to you, you're held accountable for it. So if you heard it, <clears throat> you got word on it, now you're accountable for that word. It's time for us to delight ourselves in him. So we can be intimate just like that. So when the enemy comes and he start telling you what God ain't going to do, you be like, brother, I'm too intimate with the Lord. He going to do it. Listen, he always comes through for me. He Listen, the way he loves me, how faithful he is to me, that's why people that are really in love with each other, people that really love God and that love each other, they are not unfaithful. Why? Because they... Listen, that relationship is so powerful. They are too intimate. They don't want anything coming between that. And God knows that. That's why he said, if you delight yourself in me, I'll give you the desires of your heart because you ain't going to be worried about nothing else and nobody else. It's all about me. And I can't wait to give it to you. I can't wait to bless you because I can trust. Come on, God, with this here. 
I'm trying to go, but he keep talking. <clears throat> God says when we delight ourselves in him, what's going to happen is we... You're going to want to do it his way. You're going to trust his way. When the enemy comes in and tries to tell you something different from what God said, you're going to be so intimate because God has been so loving and so faithful to you that you, you're going to laugh in the enemy's face. God says, I can trust you. Listen to me and I'm out. God says, I can, when you delight yourself in me, I can give you the desires of your heart because then I can trust you that you won't turn away from me. See, the reason the reason why some of us haven't gotten the thing that we have been praying for is because God knows when I give it to you, you ain't going to be paying me no mind. You ain't. Oh, you all Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, Jesus all night long. Oh, it's Jesus, 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 not. But when I give you the thing that you're praying for, you are not, I ain't going to be able to find you. <clears throat> you won't be as committed. Listen, I ain't say you're going to go away from God, but your commitment is going to change. That's how you can tell when, when people are not intimate, when spouses are not intimate, or y'all out here playing around out here in these single streets, and y'all decide here doing it with people. The reason they are not committed is because. People desire intimacy. Why? Because it first comes from God. Because He desires to be intimate with us. And we are when we are intimate with Him. Listen, He said, "Oh, I'm not worried about giving JC a husband because we will have built this foundation so strong. Our intimacy would be so strong that she ain't gonna let him come between us. I can trust her now." Maybe that's why we haven't gotten the thing that we have, God, I, we haven't gotten the thing that we have been praying for is because God is saying, I can't trust you with it yet. My answer is not no, it's, it's not yet. <clears throat> I got to put some more, some more uh, alphabets behind it. I'm not telling you no, I'm just saying not yet. Because I love the way we are right now, but I know when he come, I know when the children come, you want children. I know they're going to just, they're going to distract you. This is why the Bible, this is why the Bible tells us, you know, when you're single, you know, walk in purpose, do your thing, live your life, live it well. Because when you get married, now your attention goes to your spouse. It's going to go to your spouse. It's going to go to your family. It's going to go to to your household. It's going to go to, go to the things that you need to take care of. Now, you're not going to be able to have all of that affection towards God. And he, hash it, it came up. He get up. Yes, God. He, Jesus, he knows that. So he said, I need you to develop this relationship with me so much so that it's part of your DNA. It's part of who you are so that when I bless you with the thing that I do want you to have, you won't turn. Go steal five times. You know how when a, when a spouse works a lot, <clears throat> They be like, baby, on my day off, we going somewhere. We going, we going to go out for, we going to go out for the weekend. We going to go on a date. A person that loves you, they will make time for you. If a person really wants you, if you have something that they value, if they, no, 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 if they value you as an individual, they'll make time for you. But if they just value what you can give them, child, they'll play with your time. And God says. Y'all do me the same way. Y'all get mad when Fred just want to get between your legs and Fred don't really want to spend time with you, but that's what you do to me. What Fred do to you, you do to me. All right. Lord, we thank you. <laughs> I done made him mad. The Holy Ghost done made him mad because I ain't made you nothing. I'm just out here trying to tell you the truth. Why? Because I love you, baby. I know it's hard. Swallow it, swallow it, swallow it. It's like, it's like Father's John, swallow it. It's going to be good for you. It's good for you. Swallow it. Be a big girl. Put your big girl panties on. Sir, put them big boy boxes on and swallow that thing. Swallow it. 
everything that God does, it is to mature us in the word. The more we are mature in the word, the more we will glorify the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. It's not about your feelings, boo. It's bigger than that. Let's get that straight today. It's bigger than that. Your maturity is for the upbuilding of the kingdom. The more mature we are, the more we can draw people to Christ, which builds the kingdom. We cannot be earthly minded down here. We've got to be kingdom minded. Lord, we thank you for this word today. Thank you for this conversation. I pray that it will take root, that it will not fall on dry ground, but it will fall on good ground and it will grow and flourish into something that causes our lives to be transformed and changed so that we can be greater in the kingdom so that we can be used to draw others to you because of the life that we live. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. May he be gracious to you. I pray that God will cover, keep, protect, and preserve you and your family and everybody you're connected to. I pray that he will take care of you as he continues to do, that he will show his love for you, his faithfulness towards you. He will give you mercy and grace. He'll give you what you don't deserve, even when you, when you know you don't deserve it. God is faithful. I pray that you would desire him more than anything, that you will delight yourself in him more than anything and anybody, that he will be your delight. And we won't delight in him for the things, for the present, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, -E but we will delight in him for his presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. Because when you truly love someone, you value their presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E, more than any gifts they could give you, because their presence is a gift. It is the gift. All right, I love y'all. Until tomorrow, have an amazing day, and know that I love you, and God does too. All right, have a good day. Oh, God, that was good. <clears throat> that was really good.